Graham Wagg's incredible double hundred and five wickets for Michael Hogan has given Glamorgan a chance of pulling off an important win over Surrey in Guildford, in spite of Aaron Haranath scoring his second hundred of the match on the third day. The wonderful Wagg had moved to a career best score with a boundary in the first over of the morning, but it looked as if he wouldn't score many more when he lost Andrew Salter, a wicket which left the Morgan on 332 for nine in response to Surrey's 406. But from there, Wagg simply lifted off, as did many of his shots. From his overnight 116, he was quickly at his 150, with this four off Tom Curran, who was being sent around the park by the former Derbyshire player, who took 20 runs off the over to take his tally of fours to 19 and his number of maximums to six. Several more followed in one of the most brutal assaults seen on a cricket pitch, even in a year where there have been plenty. Wag was moving into dreamland and in no time at all he found himself on 198, but with number 11 Hogan on strike. The message may have been to block out six deliveries to give Wag the chance of producing something very special. A double ton batting at number 8, which had only been done once before in the history of the championship. Instead, Hogan played his shots, these three fours coming off successive deliveries from Curran, who in the space of four overs was smashed for 66 runs to shatter his figures. Wag missed one chance to get the two runs he needed, but now had the strike at the start of the next over, and to the first ball he clipped a leg and then started running, for a very long time, as he celebrated a 200 of 215 balls with 21 fours and 11 sixes. His heart was probably still just about pumping out of his shirt when he finally mishit one next ball. But what entertainment. 114 runs coming in 13 overs at the start of this day as Glamorgan were all out for 437. That gave them a lead of 31 and bear in mind that they'd got to only 106 for 6 when Wag came into bat. He was not now given the new ball as he calmed down, leaving it to Craig Mishada to cause Zappa and Sari some problems. When Wag did come on, he nearly saw Harinath play a ball back onto his own stumps. But the opener survived until lunch, a morning session ending after 159 runs had been scored in 25 overs. Harinath should have gone in the second over after the restart. A rare mistake from Mark Wallace who missed an edge offered by the batsman who was on 24 at the time. There was no repeat of the error when Hogan found the edge of Ansari's bat. This time he was taken and left with 29 runs to his name at 56 for 1. If ever a man was to make the most of an opportunity, then it was Haranath, not just doing well after that let-off, but also ensuring that he did his very best after being called up late into this side after Rory Burns' now much-mentioned injury. He was soon moving through the numbers again. A 100 in the first innings was added to with a 50 this time out one which occupied 73 deliveries, an eighth boundary and another to the vacant third man fence, taking him to his mark. Harinath was enjoying himself once again. It was a knot which was, of course, important to his team and not just himself. And it became even more so when Will Bragg was given the ball and trapped Dominic Sibley in front for 13 at 103 for two, the lead at 72. Harinath continued to frustrate the home attack in a knot which had arrested the momentum given to the Welshman by Wag's assault. This has been a sensationally good cricket wicket. The bowlers getting something from its pace while the batsmen earning plenty of value for their shots. We have had a lot of runs but a positive result is still likely. The latest to start finding the boundary of these was Ben Folks, who took Mercedes for these three fours off successive deliveries. Surrey starting to push ahead now. Wag had done just about everything in this game, so he had a go at bowling some spin before tea. The break coming with Surrey on 166 for two, 135 ahead. But the game started to change in the day's last session. On 33, folks nicked off to a good one from Hogan in the first ball of the evening. Harinat then moved into the 90s with his 11th four. And shortly afterwards, he became the first Surrey player since Mark Ramprakash in 2007 to register 200s in the same game. An awesome achievement for a man playing for the first time this summer, lest we forget. This one had come off 149 balls with 12 boundaries included. His celebrations were slightly less exuberant than the first time around. Alas for him, he was soon out. Salter winning an LBW, one which started to turn this game Glamorgan's way. Harinath on his way for 104 
She could hardly believe. That was 104 more runs than Anish Kapil managed. He went in the same way to Hogan in the next over to leave Surrey on 192 for five. That had them 161 runs ahead with still the best part of four sessions left in this wonderfully entertaining game of cricket. One of so many this summer which have been a fantastic advert for the LV County Championship. While Vikram Solanke took on the anchor role for his team, Gary Wilson was able now to express himself a little more at the other end as these two began to develop a rather important partnership, one which was required after the loss of those three wickets after tea. Wilson was put down at leg slip before he caused too much damage and that meant that he was able to reach a 50 with his ninth four from his 59th delivery. But shortly after raising his bat, things started to go wrong for his team not for the first time in this game that the visitors grabbed wickets in a cluster. After adding 81 with Solanke, Wilson gave Hogan his fourth wicket of this innings with a nick behind to go for 54. Before the Australian grabbed a fifth in his next over, Gareth Batty with the edge this time to give Wallace his fourth catch of the day. To make matters worse, Colin Ingram then trapped Curran in front in the following over, the penultimate one of the day, as three wickets fell for one run right at the end of what was another superb day of Red Bull cricket. That ending has changed the complexion of this match completely. Surrey will now enter the final day on 276 for eight, and that has them 245 runs to the good. They'll want more, and so Solanke's innings now becomes important. He'll resume against the second new ball, which is available now, on 33, while Hogan will want to use it to add to his figures of 5 for 44.